fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver. The Lone Ranger. <laughs> His faithful Indian companion, Toto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fella. I am a Hey! The Lone Ranger and Tonto camped on a hillside overlooking a valley in the southern part of the Oklahoma Territory had just finished their noonday meal when they heard distant hoofbeats. Sounds like someone riding past, Kimasabi. Yes. There he is, Tonto. Riding through the valley from the north. Kimasabi. The horseman threw up his arms and pitched from the saddle. He shot. They're gun smoke. They're big rock on side of Baba Hill. There's a man, Tonto, riding uphill from behind that rock. Him, him ambusher. He shoot? No use. He's too far away. The right of the man he shot. Easy, steady, big fella. Easy, fella. Montilla! Cops, coward! The unknown gunman riding uphill on the opposite side of the valley had disappeared over the crest. By the time the Lone Ranger and Toto reached the fallen man and drew rein. Oh, 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 easy, steady, big fella. Get the first aid supplies in my saddlebag while I see if this man's alive. He do it all. Steady. Your mask. Nevertheless, I'm here to help you. I'll cut away your shirt and see how badly you're wounded. Oh, no. Shot came from up there. Yes, I know. What's your name? Sawyer. Bill Sawyer. You know who shot you? Uh, must have been one of Tarbuck's gang. Who is Tarbuck? Crook. He and his gang took over Lone Pine. Lone Pine. Is that the name of the town west of that hill? Yes. Gunman ride in that direction. Look at this wound, Toto. Uh, it's a bad wound. I know it's bad. Uh, Me clean and bandage it. Uh, your, your name, Toto? That's right. Uh, who, who's the masked man? Him, Lone Ranger. Oh, Lone Ranger. Uh. Providence must have brought you here. Steady. Don't try to move. Better. In my shirt pocket. Wait, I'll get it. Is this it? Yes, sir. I was riding to Smithville to mail it. It's addressed to the federal government in Washington. Yes. It tells how Tarbuck got crooks of his gang and jobs as judge, sheriff, other officers. Now he runs Lone Pine with a gang of crooks. I understand. He, he framed decent people who wouldn't out to him. Framed them for the crimes his gang committed. So we left. Lots of us left town. We camped north of here. Jim Galt's in charge of the camp. Jim Galt? Yes. Tell him. <laughs> what do you want me to tell Jim Galt? Tell him. Darbuck has a spy in our camp. He knew we were sending a letter to Washington. That's why I was shot. Can you name the spy? Yes. Hanford. Pete Hanford. Are you sure it's Pete Hanford? Must be him. He and Galt. Only ones who knew I'd ride through here with the letter. I'll give you a message to Jim Galt, and I'll see that the letter is mailed. Lone Ranger. Yes, Bill. No. Uh, don't mail that letter. Washington's a long way off. But you're here. Open letter. Read it. You'll know what to do. Oh. Him gone. Yes, Toto. Wrap him in the blankets and tie him on the back of his horse while I read this letter. <laughs> The letter gave a detailed account of the lawless activities, the unjust taxes, and the ruthless oppression that had caused the decent and law-abiding citizens to leave their homes in Lone Pine. After reading the letter, the Lone Ranger said, Toto, Bill Salter told us that Tarbuck has a spy in Jim Galt's camp. That's right. Well, two can play at that game. 
You become a spy on Tarbuck's gang. Me go to Lone Pine? Yes, you have a Mexican hat and coat in your saddlebag. Uh huh. You sometime use it for disguise. Well, this time you use it for a disguise. And learn all you can about Tarbuck and his plans. And meanwhile, I'll take Salter's body to the camp of his friends. You tell Jim Gaunt about the spy? Yes, Toto. Oh, uh, meet me tomorrow morning in our camp on the hillside. Uh, me savvy. Easy, the big fellow. Come on, come on, Toto. Leading Bill Salter's horse with a dead man tied across the saddle, the Lone Ranger rode north at an easy gait. It was after dark when he reached the top of a small hill and saw the refugee camp in the valley beyond. Surrounded by wagons and tied horses, over half a hundred men, women, and children were gathered near the center of the camp where a fire burned brightly. Who's over? He's steady now. They were listening to their leader, Jim Galt, who stood on a flat top rock. In the darkness, the Lone Ranger advanced unnoticed. And if we can hold out just a little longer, we may get the help we need. Where's the help coming from? Camp Brady. Ten miles west of here. But, Jim, I talked to Colonel Miller at the camp. He said he couldn't take action against Tarbuck unless he had orders from Washington. I think he'll receive those orders by telegraph. Why do you think so? I wrote a complete report of the way Tarbuck took over Lone Pine, and the way he treated us. By now, that letter should be on the way to Washington. Bill Salter left here with it this morning. He was to mail it in Smithville. It'll take two weeks for a letter to reach Washington. Pete, if we cut the food rations again, we can hold out for two weeks. You mean we got to get by with even less grub than we've had? That's right. I don't uh, care. Our kids are hungry. Joe, we're all hungry. That letter won't mean a thing. A man in Washington don't care what happens to a handful of people like That's us. Right. I think you're wrong, Pete. I say we'll starve to death before the Army turns a hand to help us. But stop him. Him. I think Pete Hanford's right. You bet I'm right. I say we got to admit we made a mistake and go back to our homes in Lone Pine. Right, oh, wait, 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 listen to me. Friends, we can't go back. Every one of you voted to leave Lone Pine and stick together. If we go back, Tar Buck will be even worse than he was before. He'll bleed us white with taxes and assessments and jail anyone who can't pay. And anyone who refuses to kowtow to him will be framed and maybe... Hang for a murder that one of the Tarbuck gang committed. Well, I'd rather pay Tarbuck's taxes than starve to death. I'd rather starve than pay tribute to a crook. Jim, you don't have a wife and kids that'll have to starve with you. I say we gotta do one of two things. Either admit we're licked and go back peaceful, or make a fight of it and go back with our guns blazing. Oh, Pete, you talk like a fool. Ah. You know doggone well we wouldn't have a chance if we tried to shoot it out with Tarbuck's gunslingers and go back peaceful. I speak. He's mad. Where'd he come from? Who is he? Hello, Hoot. Who are you, mister? I'm on your side, George. I brought your friend, Bill Salter, here. Where is Bill? Over there, wrapped in a blanket on the back of his horse. You mean he's dead? Yes. He was ambushed on his way to Smith. Ambushed? Yes. I was with him when he died. He gave me the letter you wrote. Who ambushed him? He said he'd been shot by one of Tarbuck's men, so he couldn't mail the letter in Smithville. How did Tarbuck know about the letter? He has a spy in your camp. But but only three of us know about the letter. Bill Salter, myself, and... And the spy. Pete Hanford. You lying out, Hoot. Oh, draw that gun. I'll kill you. I warned you, Hanford. Oh, my hand. I fired at your gun. The bullet didn't touch your hand. There'll be no more gunplay by either of you. Jake, pick up Hanford's gun. Yeah, I got it. And you, mister, holster that shooting iron. Oh, very well. You men had better watch, Hanford. We're watching both of you. Hanford, if it's true that you're working for Tarbuck... It's not. You certainly played Tarbuck's game when you tried to persuade these people to return to Lone Pine. I said I'd rather go back than starve to death. Hanford, someone must have told Tarbuck about Salter riding with that letter. I didn't tell him. And you're the only other man who knew. I saw you riding out of the camp last night, Hanford. Did you meet one of Tarbuck's men? No. And no one can prove otherwise. Jim, Bill Salter asked me to read your letter and help you in any way possible. Oh, what made him think you could help us? He knew my identity. Just who are you? This letter will explain. It's signed by one of the Army's finest generals. Well, I'll be doggone. 
Who is he? Folks, this man's the Lone Ranger. <laughs> he says Hanford's a spy. That settles it. That, that letter don't prove a thing. He could have forged it or stolen it. Oh, the way he drew his gun is proof enough for me that he's the Lone Ranger. No one else could be that fast. No, uh, I, I, oh, Mr. If you read this letter, you know what the situation is. Yes. We'll be mighty glad to have your help. We'll do whatever you suggest. Yes, sir. Then tie Pete Hanford and hold him prisoner. Oh, no, wait. Hold on. You shut up, Hanford. Tie him up, boys. I got a hunk of rope right here. No, Good. No. We'll keep him tied in his own wagon. Now, what else do you suggest, mister? That you stay here. Don't lose faith in your government. I'll return as soon as possible. Where are you going? What are you going to do? I'm going to try to find a way to smash the Tarbuck gang. Mm-hmm. Hello. Come on, Early the following morning, just after daybreak, the Lone Ranger and Tonto met in their camp on the hillside. The Indian told all that he had learned of the gang's plans. The Lone Ranger listened carefully, then said, Now, as I understand it, Tonto, Tarbuck figures the followers of Jim Galt will be starved into submission. That's right. They'll either return to town and submit to his domination, or try to attack and drive out the crooks. If them attack, he must have it. Tarbuck gunman meet them and kill him. And after they're dead, he'd claim that their attack was an armed rebellion against law and order. That's right. But what if Jim Galt and the other townspeople neither attack nor surrender? What if they simply drive their wagons to a new location and start a new town? Then Tarbuck be plenty glad. Then him have land and homes of all people. Mm, so he figures he'll win no matter what the people do. That's right. And he's probably counting on his spy to give him advanced knowledge of any move the refugees decide to make. Ah. If the spy is captured, Galt might make a surprise attack. That's not good, Kimastabi. There are too many gunmen in town. Probably many of those gunmen are wanted by the law. Tonto, I have an idea, and it might work. Ah. And what's your idea, Kimastabi? While I tell you about it, take off that Mexican disguise. Uh Uh-huh. We're going to ride to an army post about ten miles west of the valley where the refugees are camped. I'll show Gold's letter to Colonel Miller and see what he has to say. Late that afternoon, after showing the letter of identification, the Lone Ranger and Tonto were admitted to the office of Colonel Miller, the commandant at Camp Brady. The officer welcomed both men warmly and said, I've heard a lot about you, and I'm delighted to meet you, both of you. Please sit down. Thank you, Colonel Miller. We came here because of a situation in Lone Pine. Oh, yes, I'm familiar with it. You are? A committee from Jim Gall's camp called on me for aid. Yes, I know that, sir. But did they tell you the whole story? Yes, I believe so. As I understand it, a man named Tarbuck has practically stolen the town. That's what it amounts to. I'll have to send the Washington office a complete report, together with sworn statements from the people who have complaints about the government in Lone Pine. Tarbuck represents the government. Yes, I know it. But it will take time to prepare such a report, and at least two weeks for it to reach Washington. That is correct. Then there'll be a further delay before you are given the authority to act. I, uh, I may not be given that authority. It depends largely on the nature of the report. Colonel Miller, those refugees will starve because they receive help in their fight against oppression. He said, I'd like to help them. I might send a little food, but we haven't much to spare. Now, Colonel Miller, I know that you can't attack Tarbuck and his gang of crooks without authority. If I made an attack on any town, no matter how poorly it's governed, without specific authority from Washington, I'd... At the court martial. If you and the detachment of your men were to be attacked by outlaws, uh, would you need authority from Washington to defend yourselves? Of course not. That's an entirely different matter. What would you do if Tarbuck's men opened fire on a detachment of your men? We'd certainly return the fire. And if there were any survivors after the battle, we'd take them prisoner and punish them to the full extent of the law. That's what I hoped you'd say. Do you think Tarbuck's men are foolish enough to attack the United States Army? They might make such a mistake. I doubt it. Colonel, would it be possible for a detachment to make an inspection trip to Lone Pine? 
Well, I... I'd say it would be possible. Would you sincerely like to help Jim Galt and the decent people who have been driven from their homes? I would indeed. But you can see that there's as little I can do. All you have to do, sir, is to send a detachment to inspect Lone Pine. Yeah. At a specific time. Yes, I, I begin to understand. A heavily armed detachment of hard fighters. You mentioned a specific time. Tomorrow night, sir, there will be no moon. It uh, should be a dark night. <laughs> a dark night. In darkness, Tarbuck's men might make that mistake you mentioned. And where would they likely make the mistake? In a narrow valley between Lone Pine and the camp of the refugees. <laughs> Tonto, your mass friend is proof of the saying that where there's a will, there's a way. <laughs> From the army camp, the Lone Ranger and Tonto rode to the camp of the refugees, arriving there after dark. The masked man outlined his plan to Jim Galt, who agreed to do his part. I'll do anything you say. Thanks, Jim, for your confidence. Oh, uh, where's Pete Hanford? He's in his covered wagon. He's been held prisoner there since last night when you exposed him as a spy. Good. Uh, you wait here with the horses, Tonto. Uh-huh. Jim, you and I will carry on a discussion while we walk slowly past Pete Hanford's wagon. Helplessly tied, hand and foot, Pete Hanford lay on the floor of the heavy prairie schooner. Hey. Presently, he heard a voice that he remembered, the voice of the masked man who had exposed him as one of Tarbuck's gang. It's the only thing to do, John. I'd rather take almost any other course. Well, I've talked to Colonel Miller. Help from the Army can't be secured without orders from Washington. So you'll have to make the attack. When do you suggest? Tomorrow night would be the best time. Tomorrow night, eh? Yes, it'll be a dark night. You should be able to get through the valley and close to town before you're discovered. Now, by talking the Carbuck gang by surprise, you might I win. wish I could get free. Tarbuck should know about this. Don't go on ropes. Pete Hanford struggled against the ropes until he was exhausted. He rested for a time. He was about to renew his struggles when he heard a low voice. Looking toward the open back of the wagon, he saw a man in the shadows. Who are you? You're not asked questions, Tom. Cut ropes. How'd you get past the guard? There's no guard outside. I figure you try it tight. Get there. Are you free? Why are you setting me free? Money. I've got no cash here, but I'll see that you're paid. Not good. Me leave saddle horse for you near big tree south of camp. Maybe me see you in Lone Pine. You pay there. No, no. You wait right here, Injun. I'll be back in a couple of hours, and I'll bring money with me. Not good. Now, you get some more rope so you can tie me up again when I get back. I don't want anyone to know that I got free. Uh, me be here. <laughs> Pete sneaked out of camp, found a saddled horse, then rode hard to a meeting place a few miles away, where another member of the Tarbuck gang was stationed. Oh, oh, oh. He told quickly of his exposure and capture, then disclosed the refugees' plan to attack. It's tomorrow night, Red. They'll come through the valley to Lone Pine. They figure they're with me captured. They'll take Tarbuck and the rest of the boys by surprise. <laughs> They're the ones who'll be surprised. Yeah. Now, I gotta get back to camp. You're going back? Yeah. Galt finds I've escaped. And they call off the attack because he'll figure Tarbuck's been warned of it. Tarbuck's been hoping those critters would attack. Yeah, I know it. Oh, Red, let me have a few dollars to pay that angel who freed me. Yeah, sure. Hey, here you are. Oh, thanks. Now, you better ride the Lone Pine. I'm on my way. Steady now. Get it! Get it! Get it! The following night found Tarbuck and his gunman on a hillside overlooking the narrow valley through which anyone approaching Lone Pine from the north would have to travel. There was no moon. The faint starlight was sufficient only to reveal the men as dark, shadowy figures. 
Tarbot said. If there was any dark here, we wouldn't be able to see him to shoot him. We can see him well enough, boss. How long we have to wait, senor? I don't care how long we wait. It'll be worthwhile. We'll be rid of all those hey, people when... I hear him. Yeah, so do I. And they're coming, boys. Get set. Hey, right. they're they're getting close. Now wait for me to fire the first shot. We got it, Troopers, knowing they headed toward an ambush, had brought with them a number of spare horses. When they neared the ambush, they drew rein. The colonel addressed his men in the darkness. Come in. We're going to be fired on somewhere in the gorge ahead. So we'll send those riderless horses through ahead of us to draw the fire of the outlaws. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Have your carbines ready. And as soon as you see the rifle flashes, let them have it. Yes, sir. I'll start the rattle of this horse. In the darkness, the outlaws, about halfway up the side of the hill, heard the approaching hoofbeats, and a moment later saw the vague moving figures. All right, let him have it. Shoot! The alert soldiers responded quickly, firing their hard-hitting carbines at the flashes of the outlaw's gun. They're charging! They're coming up the hill! Oh, I mean, we can't stay here, boys. we got to get away. Watch your horses. Drop it over the hill. Uh, oh, easy. Stay around, boys. Get up! Get up! Get up! men, panicked by the oncoming soldiers, whose carbines barked repeatedly, leaped to their saddles. And as they started their flight up the hill, a horseman appeared at the hilltop, and his cry rang out above the gunfire. Hey, look up there! Jim Gold rode close behind the Lone Ranger. Then other men appeared. They're coming from the top of the hill! We're trying to... Hold, 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 hold. Trapped between the soldiers from the valley and the refugees who followed the Lone Ranger from the hilltop, the outlaws were quickly conquered. Some were killed. Many were wounded. Daybreak found Tarbuck and all of his followers in the custody of soldiers. They were lined up in front of the Lone Pine Cafe, ready for the march to Camp Brady. Jim Galt and the men who had followed him stood nearby. Fellas, the town is ours again. Sure is, Jim. And from now on, we'll be mighty careful not to let a man like Tarbuck get a political toehold. Yeah, here comes the colonel. Hey, Galt. I sent a squad to your campsite. They'll take Hanford into custody and tell your women folk to bring home the wagon. Good. Thanks, Colonel. Did you find out which of the crooks shot Bill Solder? Yes, a number of the others named him. He was killed in the fight. Well, that sure takes care of everything. We're mighty grateful to you, Colonel. Oh, get it, Galt. The army is in debt to you. Those crooks might have escaped if you and your men hadn't cut off their retreat. Oh, that wasn't our idea, Colonel. It was that masked man. Yeah. The masked man. <laughs> the battle is over and everyone is being thanked and commended except the one man who really saved Lone Pine. There he is over yonder with his Indian friend. Hey, they're waving to us. Hi there. There he goes. Riding away without even giving us the chance to thank him. Yes. That's typical of the Lone Ranger. This is a feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated, created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated, and directed by Fred Flowerday. Tonight's drama was written by Fran Stryker. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Thank <laughs> you.